All right, we have Nem Sensei and Nick at night in red along the top. Chief Pat, Oxalate, and Blue along the bottom. Now, Oxalate, the first place finisher in the spring season of the North American Crown Championship Global Series. Nem Sensei finished second in Europe to Surgical Goblins. So two very strong players here joining up with two very popular YouTubers. Wonderful log at the right lane from Nick at Night and Nem Sensei. Rolls through a bunch of gibbity gobs. Doesn't quite hit that tower, but holding on to the defense at the left lane. The Dark Goblin's going to be able to finish them off, and it's a split attack from uh, Nim Sensei and Nick at Night, but the Graf to defend against a big push over on the right. Lava Hound Inferno Dragon is bringing the heat. Yeah, bold play there, getting the Golem down, setting up a big push. The downside is they have, well, ugh, looks oh, like 16 no. Elixir coming down that right side. I hope they've got an answer for it. Looking a awfully scary, but we got a Knight and a Baby Dragon to defend against the Graveyard. Good combo there, enough damage to soak and deal the splash uh -oh, to finish uh -oh, off the uh -oh, oh, 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 The Inferno Dragon was caught between the Lava Pups and was not getting hit. Allowed it to heat up a little bit, bringing that tower down to 1297. My Golem is unfortunately just not going to present too much threat on that left lane. She had an Oxalate are holding on strong, and they're going to actually be able to counter push with that Inferno. One of the few duos in this that are actually part of the same esports team. Chief Pat has his own esports team, Tribe Gaming, and Oxalate was, I believe, the first signed and announced player on that team. So it's a cute little, uh, cute little duo we got going up here. Picked him up, and of course you're going to start strong, right? Take the champion from the NACCGS region, and you got some good prospects ahead in this King's Cup. Expect a tornado. Oh, it might be coming, though. Oh, the poison t and tornado down. works really well together, but when, when, where is it? I guess we're not going to see one. The Lava Hound's going to connect in the... Graveyard out back at uh, the right side tower down at triple digits. He may not need it because of the executioner splash damage there on it. Whoa, the Lumberjacks got to hold strong against those golems, though. 654, even though I think the defense was pretty good, Ooh. you still took a lot of damage, and that poison's going to even further bring you down within rocket range. That poison was a little aggressive. I think that Nimson and Nick and Knight had a chance to punish there, but it looks like instead they're going to go on the left side, sending in the golem. They might even just soak the damage at this right lane. Oh, you have over a minute left. We're just now hitting double elixir time, so it's not crazy to play just for, okay, like, we're going to lose that tower. Let's play for the other side and try to take that tower. Right, right. Log does not kill the archers, leaving them free to catch up against that Inferno Dragon. You got to freeze it or down. zap it or something. Oh, he's, he's rocking it. Golem healthy. The rocket takes it down. Doesn't hit the tower, though. This tower, though, is going to go into triple digits from the Golem explosion. And nice bringing hit. it down pretty low. This Finer might top. be a trade. I think it is going to be one for sure. Miner chipping away, and the Golem Explosion finishes off those goblins. It's the first tower for Nim Sensei and Nick at Night. Knight spelled right up on top, but they got to worry. There's a big split attack now. We got a Lava Hound connecting and Poison chipping away at the right side tower. 18 seconds left. They just used their log with a little bit of an oops on the left side, so I hope they have another zap or log to finish off that tower oh, on the right. Oh, log's going to do it. Up. Zap wouldn't do it. You're right. Good log to finish it off. And now a golem in the middle. Great job by Nem Sensei and Nick and I take advantage of that situation. You knew you are. All right, my opponent's low. They just had to use their spells to kill a, a tower that otherwise wasn't doing anything. Let's go in in the middle all at once. And this all-in push is bringing it down nearly to triple digits. You know, that was really heartfelt and touching. I saw both gangs come together. They often like to work alone, but all 10 goblins to defend up that right side tower keeps it up and healthy, and it's their turn to counterattack now. Cheap and Oxalate send in the Lava Hound. It's connecting to great effect, with, especially with the Graveyard added on top. It's MV, not going down, though. MVP Dark Goblin sitting there in the nook between the King and Crown Towers was outside of the Poison Range, picking off Skeletons, Lava Pups, and more. Now we have Miner coming in on the right side. That Baby Dragon matches up well against the Minions. The question is how much damage can you do to the tower? It might be enough right here! Oh, Rocket and the Baby Dragon not able to finish it off, but we got the Poison taken away, and the Log's going to get the kill in there. Great Lava Hound Graveyard attack out on the top left, but it just couldn't get there quick enough. And we, that is it. Talking about, uh, you know, tile radius, and they take a long time to land, you know, especially yep. if you're trying to shoot against, like, a balloon or some other flying thing. you got to watch the shadows. Yes. That's how you know where to shoot. So if Nem and Nick at night want to pull some tricky tricks, oh, here comes the rocket, and you can't <laughs> miss the giant. <laughs> Giant's bigger than the tower itself. It's yeah. something you can hit with the rocket. So, great rocket there. Didn't miss that one Ooh, for sure. Good timing on that miner out the right side. The Mega Minion's about to get the connection in there. Log rolls through. It looks like it gets a swipe. Very nice. So, Flying Machine there in the middle. Going to support the Giant. The long range oh, no! of damage. What happened there? It was a fireball thrown at the Flying Machine, but they missed. It's hard to hit those flying troops. What can I say? Jeez, go for the shadows, people. See that little baby dragon shadow? That's where the baby dragon actually is, not where you think the green in the sky is. Whoa! Wow. Rocket comes down the second Ooh. rocket there, and it looks like Chief Pat and Oxalate are not going to misplace that many rockets. They are playing a very defensive style of gameplay, hoping to get there on the back of big spells. For sure. I mean, we were asking to see more rockets earlier, right? It's reliable, heavy-hitting, 493 damage that you cannot stop. 
but it really opens you up to a big punish. If your opponents can get that six elixir converted into a push, they can really tear your tower down. Their left side's at 623. Fire 93 taken away from the poison. And that level 10 knight tells me something that there is in the deck. Oh, We're looking at Mir, buddy. A Ooh. Mir! Mir causes troops to be one level higher than normal, so a level 10 knight impossible to get in tournament play without using Mir. That tells me that Chief Pat and Oxlade are also holding Rocket Mirror, so if that tower gets down within range, they can fire two back-to-back -back rockets to finish it off. But meantime, they just gotta take out one tower and hold off this giant push coming in on them right now. Holding that Miner onto the King means that they're trying to keep the damage off that right side. A very unhealthy bowler, with just a few hit points left, is going to be waddling on in the left lane, but he needs some support if he's going to get to roll that boulder in. Triple digits on the left lane is pretty good, but the defensive spell cycle deck from Chief Bat and Oxlade has not been able to hold off against these massive attacks from Team Knight. It's so much better in double elixir time because you can do plays like that. Miner plus Rocket, nine elixir, not just take out the Electro Wizard, nearly finish off that tower, and because you gain elixir so much quickly, so much quicker in double elixir time, it's uh, easy to recover when you do a big like A quicklier attack if you're able to get the juice for it, but that left side still at 146 is kind of in an awkward range. You don't want to throw a rocket at that, but a log's not enough to finish it off either. Maybe a mirror log combo, but they just spit their log on the right. I don't even know if they're gonna be able to hold this right side tower for their next 24 I'm seconds. Tough because I'm sure there's a big spell of some variety in Nem Sensei and Nick at Knight's deck, and that means that they could probably play a rocket over their own. Oh, great rocket again! This time the bats come down, avoid most of it, but still getting anything with a minor rocket is a good combo. Another miner hits the right side tower, and they keep throwing those rockets, but it's just not enough. Mm, baby dragon and uh, flying machine in the back get the lock onto the tower, and that's going to be a one. Win. Yeah, it's a win. It's a two-zero yeah. win. So that is Nem Sensei and Nick at Knight, two -one the win. Ultra Knights. Give them some credit. They got a tower down. It was a two-one. Oh, two-one win. Yeah. A two-zero win in the match. Oh, a yes, sweep yes, yes. of the match. That means the Ultra Knights have upset the misplaced Ooh. Rockets, and they're going to be moving on to the next round, joining Molten.